So this is it guys, the end of the journey of F1 2006 Karimo. Welcome guys to the finale, episode number 17 of season 5 of F1 2006 Karimo. This is the Brazilian Grand Prix. Today we'll be doing a longer race, uh, one of which I've, I've not done a race length this distance before, so this will be entirely new for me. Uh, there may be strategy elements to this race, there might not be, I don't know. Um, so I'll have to wait and see, but... We've had the best part of 90 races now. This will be race number 90. Um, much less episodes have gone out than that because we've had many, many multiple race episodes due to the brutalness of this game. Let's have a little look at the statistics really quick. 267 points, 18 race wins, 16 poles, 50 finishes. So... We've only finished just over half the races, but bear in mind, this does not take into account the results from Season 1 of Career Mode. Um, I think from memory, my first season I did on YouTube was on Medium Difficulty, a restart of the Career Mode, and Simulated Season 1. So, some of these stats are a little bit off, but for the most part, you're getting the results of Season one, uh, season 2 to 5, and that's pretty accurate. But, it's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Um, we have the opportunity to win the Constructors today. This is the gap. Nine points to Renault. I'm hoping that Montoya is fast at this race circuit. I think I'm going to start from the back, or I will start from the back, just to keep it interesting. It, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter a whole great deal if we win the Constructors or not, although it would be nice. I think it would be more fitting and more fun for you guys to see a, uh, a race but we start from the back and, and execute a lot of overtakes because that's something that this season has been lacking. I won't lie, um, the overtakes uh, haven't quite been there. So we're going to deliver at the final opportunity the Brazilian Grand Prix. Oh, no grand introduction from our wise man, James Allen. We're doing practice for once. This is such a weird sensation. I've not heard a single commentator yet. It's like they're not on shift until... The important sessions. 12.3 is our opening time. No idea if that's good or not. Oh, good day, good day, Barrier. That's our second bit of wheel damage for the day. Oh, hello, Rain. That's going to put an end to this session very quickly. This will be the last time that we get in. 12.2, we've improved by a tenth over our original banker time, which is actually really good. Across the line, that's a 12.1. We've lowered the benchmark again, but with the weather looming, that will be the end of our running today. There's nothing more we can learn. That, that's so weird. That's okay. That's the end of that's the end of practice. Then no, no showing of the overall leaderboards. No commentary. No nothing. It's very underwhelming how uh, little emphasis they put on practice. It's like the commentators, or just anyone, it just bothers to show up until qualifying. Which is what I've been doing, which is quite weird. But anyway, um, we're going to skip over qualifying now. We had the pace. We had blindingly fast speed, but blindingly bad consistency to go with that. So the race is going to be interesting. Welcome to Sao Paulo, Brazil, for the final qualifying session in this year's calendar. Session one is about to start, so let's find out who will be making up the last six places on the grid. I'm just going to see... Who gets pole? I just want to see if Montoya's got the pace. If he if he's like up there, fastest car, I might qualify. But that's the only scenario where I see myself doing that. Montoya's P6, so no dice. That, that's a no from me, Chief. We'll continue in a few moments with the second knockout session, where we'll decide grid positions 16 to 11. Oh, okay. So we can we can actually spectate qualifying. We I forgot you can spectate the sessions that you. Don't qualify through. So, I'm going to fast forward this, and we'll see what the pace is like for Montoya. Just a quick update with four minutes to go. He's just hanging on to a top 10 spot. It's advanced time again. And he makes it through in terms of the knocked out drivers. No surprises there, with the exception of probably Barrichello. Probably should have made it through to Q3. The final shootout session is about to get underway. We've reset the clocks for the final time. This session will determine the order of a top 10 for tomorrow's race. This is the final battle for pole position. Right, so first run done, kind of. 
14 9 for Montoya. He's like a second away, a second and a half, and 1.1 seconds, shall I say, which is not great considering Brazil is a short circuit. He really needs to get a move on. Four minutes to go now. We're getting into the business end. Montoya still P7 on his 14 8. I don't know if my fast forwarding is really helping things here. Is Michael. Where is he sitting at the moment? I don't know why I'm doing a running commentary of qualifying. The race is what we all want to see. Michael's P2. Uh, good four tenths away from Alonso. It looks like he's got a good stranglehold on qualifying at the moment. Those Renaults looking very pacey. Fisichella, six tenths away. But now we have advanced time to the end of the session. I'm going to click view standings and we're going to see where our teammate stands for the final race of this career mode. He is P7 still. Only improved by like under a tenth from what he set at the start of the session on heavy fuel. That is... Horrible. JP, I'm glad I didn't waste my time trying to qualify for this race. So there we have it. From 10th to pole, the grid order looks like this. So first and third for the Renaults. That is uh, diabolical. Even if we got pole today, which but looking at the times, we would have done by a mile. We, we have a lot of pace. I think we were in the 12s, a low 12s in practice. So we can find our way through. Um, we, really, we need one of the Renaults to have a failure, and then we need to beat the other one. Um, but like I said, even if I was to qualify at the front, finish at the front, there's no guarantee that we'd still win the Constructors. We probably wouldn't get an exciting race that way. So, we're going to get an exciting race by doing the strategy that we're doing. Um, it's just a case of not getting tangled up with the back markers, and uh, we should be on for a very good race. Hopefully, the weather doesn't intervene in this Brazilian Grand Prix. The one time I don't want it to rain, please, the Brazilian weather gods, look after me, please. Man. Two-stop race. I don't know if that's the right way to go, but if the game is giving me this, the AI must be up to the same plan as well. We're here in Interlagos, 2.7 miles of tortuous and somewhat scary tarmac on the outskirts of Sao Paulo. This is the Brazilian Grand Prix. What is Heinfeld doing in fourth in a Sauber? That's the biggest anomaly I've seen. We have a clear grid and the drivers are ready for the off. And off they go on their parade lap. Uh, in about 10 years time we'll be able to go soon as well, hopefully. It's been a while since I've started this far back. I'm interested to see what the team is asking me of me today. They have no reference. The for the race today is to beat your teammate, but also finish the race safely. Try to stay out of trouble wherever possible. You may well find yourself being lapped, but that's better than being stuck in a gravel trap or worse. Okay, well that's fair enough. They didn't have any reference to go by in qualifying. They do have the practice time, which is the fastest time of the weekend, might I add, but a lot of cars to pass. A long old race, strategy to get involved. There are so many things that could potentially go wrong in this one. If it all goes smoothly, then that'll be somewhat of a miracle. But I'm keen to know where you guys will think I'll finish. I have no idea. How many retirements we'll get to? Long old race, a lot of opportunity for people to die. Okay, final checks show that all systems are nominal, everything's looking good. Good luck and enjoy the race. Thank you. Turn up the volume and enjoy. Here we go. The race is go, go, go. This is going to be absolutely insane heading into turn one. Nearly had a crash. Oh. If I don't talk much on this start, I, just bear with me. This is going to take all of my concentration to get out of this one alive. Enjoy the dulcet tones of the engineer, the commentators, and me wincing every so often. Oh, that's a... He's some damage to his left rear. If he wants to finish well today, he'll have to recover quickly from that one. You got yourself involved in that too. It looks like he's got away scot-free. Uh... Sure. Oh, no wonder I crashed so much in season one, man. Like, what can you do when you have no track position and just like everyone's everywhere? So here we are for the restart of the race. 
Um, it's it's too darn obvious to uh, hide the fact that we crashed. I retired straight away like I did in the last session, but somehow I'm in front of Ralph Schumacher. <sighs> Shut up! Shut up! It tells me this every time like it's the first time I've ever done this in my life. Right. Oh my god. Thank you. Can I talk now? Am I allowed to talk? I'm going to spend this entirety of the formation lap just yelling in my ear. Right. I, I don't know what Ralph Schumacher has done to end up behind me, but... Sucks to be you. I'm not even going to bother with tie attempts on this time or this attempt, but... We're going to be like driving ultra slow on this first lap because we want to avoid any crashes. That's the last thing. I, that's the last thing you want to happen in the last race of essentially your career. It seems to happen in a lot of Formula One drivers' careers. In their last race, they always seem to crash or something. But it's not. It's not going to happen in the virtual world. I'm sorry. Final systems check show that all systems are functioning within the tolerances. Have a great race. Only seconds to go before we're racing. You can really feel the tension. We are racing! Ultra slow, conservative start. Don't want to get involved in any crashes. We know how fast we are in this Grand Prix, so let's just sit back, relax, and let the crashes, oh my goodness, unfold. Maybe I should... Oh, maybe this is why I should warm up the tyres. That is diabolical through there. So, as a result of the restart of this um, qualifying set, the whole weekend, you, basically, in order to do a restart, you have to load the save again, and uh, that means the qualifying is played out slightly differently. Montoya got P4. Massa pole position, I believe, Alonso P2. And if I didn't say already, which I think I did, Montoya got fourth place. So there's a slightly higher chance of us winning the Constructors today, but not by much. We're still probably going to have to hope for a retirement on the Renault side in order to keep us in the game. But we'll see what happens. I don't like this congestion right now. These guys are so unpredictable. It's so slow. So slow. That's a die from the Toyota. I like it. And what, I, I need to clear this. I need to clear this. This is just rush hour traffic stuff right here. Inside. That's that sorted. P16. How was I ever fighting with these guys legitimately at the start of this career mode series? Don't break suddenly. You just never know with these guys. They can come up with some weird driving lines and references of when to accelerate and to brake and when not to brake sometimes but we are truly in the front lines today that's another couple of positions next up Rosberg oh oh sorry what was that contact the way his car reacted there was Crazy, the physics. I've, I've not seen something quite like that before in a game. I don't, yeah. It kind of looked realistic, but like, I, I've not seen game physics like that before. Oh, you two. Bulls and Toro Rosso's going at it. P12, give me Christian Clean as well. The slipstream on this game is pretty mad. too deep. He might get the switch back. He does. Squeezed onto the grass, no less as well, and it is P11. The heart rate is like twice as high as what it normally would be. The things you do for content. Look at this. Look at this. The car is absolutely screaming at the top of seventh gear. Nice move. Oh, Jensen, what are you doing, fella? Don't squeeze me, please. Thank you. Nine laps to our first pit window as well. This is going to be a fascinating race with strategies. I hope some people gamble for the one stop. You're doing well. That's the best time you've achieved through sector one. That it is. 
There's a Renault right in front of Barrichello. I'd say when you're racing, there's three different driving styles. Maybe four that you can that you can take. There's there's the full send, full YOLO, there's your normal driving style, which is probably what you'd have in a race. Then there's like a endurance. Look after the tires, look after the fuel, play it patient kind of race strategy. And then you've got survival. I am definitely in the survival category. I'll get back to those driving styles in a minute. This is another overtake on Trilly. P7, don't ram me up the butt heading into turn four. Oh, that's a nice switchback. This is progressively getting harder as we get through the field now. These guys are much faster and the way that their lines are being taken is just much better but still not quite great when they battle side by side you'll see you'll see like how much time Fizikella might lose for example when he tries to overtake Heidfeld in a minute but that oh my goodness that line through that section of the track as well is nothing I wonder these guys are like a second and a half slower than me a lap that is actually honestly ridiculous we are five laps into this race I think that's six, and we're now in P6. Based on this pace, we may be able... To, we might have been able to win the race in a short, normal race. Not a not a 50%. This is the corner here where they're so bad. Just They just take forever to get on the throttle, and it's just like... Making real progress here. You're doing well. It's just like free position. Here you go. Enter stage right, and away you go. But now we're in P5. Next up is our teammate. This will be a true reflection of what we can do versus the front runners. What a true indication of the pace will be. 3.7 seconds. Let's uh, get a reference this time next lap to see how much time we've gained. Michael Scratch Schumacher that. Third. It's almost crazy to me that the race would nearly be over if we were doing the normal race length. And uh, as well, if you look at the minimap, we're going to be lapping some cars in about four or five laps. Going to come in next lap. The scheduled pit stop is next lap. It's a bit conservative, don't you think? I've still got quite a bit of fuel left. The rubber on your tyres is starting to get worn, and this will affect the levels of grip you're getting. No, it's not. They're still green. They're still green after 10 laps. If I had the fuel, I'd probably st stretch out another like five, maybe even 10 laps, and make the one stop work. But we can't do that based on the current regulations. Because of the fuel, we simply just can't go that long without. DNFing in this race, which is a bit unfortunate. I just hope now that the leaders are on a similar strategy. If not, we're going to spend the next 25 laps sweating like crazy trying to catch up these guys. Does Montoya dive in and block me? No, he does not. So it is time for us to end our first in. A very successful first one at that. Why is that going so slow? I don't know. But so many positions gained. Uh, we got through cleanly. No penalties. Really? Apart from that slow down, which uh, we won't talk about. Pretty slow pit stop and pretty distracted, not going to lie. But rejoining on the circuit, it's 8.5. Solid. Let's just pray now that we don't rejoin in heavy traffic. Alright, P8. After we clear this guy, we've got a lot of clear air to make the most of. Oh, that's really bad. Try and maintain this driving. You're moving superbly through the field. Montoya's in. I think Alonso's in too. This will be crucial to see if we jump him. No change at the front, unfortunately. But the fact that we did the undercut um, means that we had a really good in-lap and the pit stop was uh, pretty crap, but the, the fact that he got the overcut and probably a better pit stop, it's, uh, it's, it's a testament to how good our outlap was, I suppose, versus him. We're still so close. Speaking of, here we go. Yeet. You're in sixth. Just heart and mouth moment there. I went into neutral. He didn't notice. In fourth at the moment. Good job. Oh, what? Okay. Um, I just went into relax mode. Well, not relax mode, but just. Going about my business and teammate slides up the inside. That was very sneaky. I'll be awake up to that next time. Imagine if he just goes like full beast mode and overtakes me in the weak spot. No, I didn't think so. 
There'll be no lunging this time around, thank you. Where's Martin? Martin Whitmarsh. Sort him out. Actually, uh... Nah, it's Ron. Old mate Ronnie boy. Sort him out. Massa and Alonso are squabbling quite hard. And Schumacher is in. He's gone for a big boy first stint. It's going to serve him well later with some flexibility. Light of fuel load perhaps coming into the next stint. I don't really know what that means because he's run so deep into this one he may not have to spend as much time in the pits later. That's how it works in V8 supercars I suppose with refueling. But here we go. The three race protagonists only a few seconds up the road. Schumacher, Alonso and Massa. Alonso in the Ferrari sandwich and to make matters more complicated here comes the traffic. Schumacher is slow here. He's got cold tyres. Lunge. Oh, it's not wise. What's that lap car doing? At the halfway mark. Oh god, we're only halfway through this race. Damn, I wish uh, Montoya was following me a bit more closely. He needs to get in this battle. I need him to at least overtake Schumacher, put pressure on Alonso to make him feel under threat for the constructors. I think ideally we both need to beat both Renaults to be any chance of this. Still no... Oh, hang on. This is a move for third place. That's us on the podium now, by the way. Very subdued reaction, I know, but... Have to stay concentrated. Still no sign of any retirements from anyone in this race. But there's still plenty of time. Oh, no. This is Massa. He got slowed up by the lap car. He was breaking in a straight line. This could be a double overtake for us heading into turn one. Do we risk it? No. I tell you what, I was getting a bit carried away with the sense of speed there and how much momentum we had. It was just uh, a little too easy to fall into the trap of throwing it up the inside of and killing our race. We've got the pace. There's no need to do something silly like that. That's a beautiful run, though, off this corner. We're going to overtake him around the outside. Max for Stappen. Ish. No, that's grass. And here we go. Beautiful run. That's that's just unfair. And here we go. This is a move for the lead. And it's only taken us 18 laps to get in this position to challenge for the race victory. Let's see if the slipstream can look after us. We're banging on the rev limiter just about in seventh gear. Again, the sense of speed is insane. I just, I just wish we had that, that feeling in, in modern games. Oh, here we go. Lap traffic again. Massa's going to crap the bed here. Or he's going to make the move stick. Oh, either way. Nice one from him there. We over and under that Midland car. Uh, I'm getting a bit too conservative here. I just don't want to lose the front wing. Let's see if we can make it work here into the final corner. We tried it before. Oh, it's not worked this time. That's contact between us and Massa. That could have easily been a wheel off there. That is exactly why I needed to be just a little bit more calm. Let's make sure that never happens again. I can't believe we haven't got away. I can't believe we haven't got damaged after that. Slipstream. Are we going to crash into each other one corner later? Thankfully not. What a race. Are you guys enjoying this? Hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, Make sure you subscribe to see plenty more racing game content. This is just the start. I'm really looking forward to the career modes we do after this one. Here we go. Move for the lead around the outside of Massa. As I do this, I think my thumbstick is starting to fall off. There's a thumbstick grip on the top of my controller. The left-hand joystick. It's just It feels like it's hanging on by a thread now. Pretty good timing, considering this is the end of an era. For this game and for this console. I don't know what I'm going to do with my PS3 after this. It's going to collect dust for many, many years. But that's mainly because um, I'm actually moving away. And I'll have a video talking about my situation. I won't be able to have a lot of my stuff come with me. Especially stuff like that, like a PS3. I'll be moving countries. More on that later. But in F1 2006 land... One of the Ferraris pitted on the last lap, Massa pitted, and now it looks like Sh uh, Schumacher has pitted on this lap as well. So Schumi went so long in that first stint, this middle one seemingly 
is ridiculously short. And how long was that? That was like eight laps, nine laps, something ridiculous like that. Now he's going to stretch his tires and his fuel load all the way to the end now for what I assume is only going to be a two-stop. Please don't be a three-stop. That would really ruin the spectacle of this race. But Ferrari testing out the undercut now. Let's see how that one plays out for him. Kappa. Look at the traffic they're in. I just lifted the flap that's like holding onto my controller on my left joystick. It is like, honestly, I am not crapping you guys. Literally hanging on by a thread. After that, there is no thumb landing thing. It's just going to be a stick that I'm going to be pushing for the rest of this race. Talk about... Talk about nursing home a, uh, I don't know, a slow failure, shall we say. Albeit it's hardware, it's a controller, but it's still something I'm going to have to deal with probably in the final five laps nonetheless. Out of my way, please. Don't want to get blown up by a lap car, thank you. We're about 12 years too early for that. Oh, oh my goodness, we're pitting this lap. I didn't see that. Drive a caution and don't overtake in sector two. Yellow flags are out. Okay. Something's happened in Sector 2. We'll get an update on that soon, hopefully, if the commentators haven't fallen asleep. It's pit stop time. It's the last one of our career. Man, that one was really... That one really snuck up on us. 7.8. Solid. Let's have a look at the thumbstick. Yep, don't want to look at that. That is a dire situation. Let's pray that that holds on. It's all going on here in Interlagos. What are we saying for this race now? Barrichello up next. He definitely needs to make another stop. Montoya, another stop as well. But who's leading? Is it one of the Renaults? Is it Alonso? That stayed out. This is certainly going to help Montoya. The fact that the Ferraris have dived in so early. Montoya will have fresher tyres. He'll be able to, able to overcut on lighter fuel. So he'll be running around at a much better pace, hopefully. And then it'll just help him overall at the back end with fresher tyres. I hope he overcuts Alonso. Now, Alonso's in now, actually, and it looks like Montoya is following, so let's see where this puts my teammate in relation to the Ferraris, because they were held up in heavy traffic as well, no less. Ah, uh, it's not good. Ah, uh, no, it's not as good as I thought. So Montoya's leaving the pit lane now. Let's not get focused on that. Hello. Oh yeah, well, the moment you take focus away from the road is the moment that you get blown up in this Grand Prix. But crucially, Montoya is ahead of one of the Renaults. Needs to dispatch Alonso. I can feel the joystick sliding off my thumb now. I think it's literally just me holding it onto the... Holding it onto the controller now. Uh, that, that, that situation is really uncomfortable for me right now. But Montoya... And it looks like rain might be on the way. I'm like sorry? Okay, yep, there's so much. There is so much going on right now. It's just, it's so hard to construct proper sentences. I apologize if that's uh, annoying you guys. But I'll do my best to, to talk over everyone else who's trying to talk over me. But 10 laps to go. Weather is looming. For the finish of this one. Looks like it's going to miss us, but you never know with this game. Constructors-wise, I think we're going to miss out by a couple of points unless Montoya can find more places. The question is, do we want to ease back and back up the Ferraris into my teammate? I'll keep you posted on that one. Oh, okay, okay, stop, stop. No, 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 no. That, I think that's our race over. That's our race over. It's game over. It's game over. Oh, the simplest of mistakes. As seen the end of our race, leading from the front of the field. And this Brazilian Grand Prix, honestly, I could have pressed on. I could have pressed on if the game allowed me to. I would have been maybe a little bit slower. We had such a lead. That's just completely unnecessary. Oh man, I really wanted to see what was going to happen in those dying laps. But it's not to be. 
man. What a sour end to what has been a pretty phenomenal career mode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. It's been a fascinating season with all manner of twists and turns to the story. It's been a wonderful journey for me and a real privilege to cover this season for you. That's it. That's the end of career mode. Uh, Jensen Button retired. There's a lot of retirements there that happened, well, in a very short space of time. There's only nine laps to go in that race and we had three retirements just after me there. So I knew those retirements were on the horizon, but um, it wasn't the contenders we were after. Um, with that, uh, I don't think we were going to win the Constructors. We would have eased into their lead a little bit by a few points. Uh, but it, not by enough, it seems. Driver standings, 122 points. 10 points clear of Alonso. Um, the pace today was insane. That was the biggest thing to take away from this race. Um, the only thing that would have happened from the, uh, the remaining nine laps is I would have slowed up. I would have tried to have back up the field. I was just about to do that. That was... Kind of like my last lap of pushing, if that makes sense. So it's a shame to see the race end the way it did. But you can't help it sometimes. That is the way it goes. Renault win the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari steal second place at the death there. If not for that DNF, that would have been second for us in the Constructors. Second, third, I don't think it quite matters, but... It would have been nice to end the season with a win. Uh, is that it? <laughs> is that it? What? Where's the, where's the, uh, the FIA prize giving ceremony? Where's Jean Tot? Where's Bernie Eccleston? Where's everyone? Where, where's the champagne? Where is the drunk Kimmy? I want it all. And all we're getting is a, a trophy in an empty cabinet. Just think, we could have filled up the other side of that if the script was a little bit stronger in those final 10 laps. <laughs> Retire, congratulations. Congratulations, you are no longer needed in the sport. Thank you, I'm an old, I'm an old man now. All right, we submitted an application for Toyota, below par performance. Yeah, team's not happy. And a racing legend bows out from Lee Wilson. Your five years as a Formula 1 driver have finally come to a close. You will be remembered as one of the finest drivers the world has ever known. Your place in Formula 1 history is assured, and it's been an honour being your agent. Well, that's nice. That's, that's, that's really nice. I hope that they don't remember me bowing out in my final race by crashing. I hope I'm remembered for some of my more Happy moments. We're going to advance time. We're going to see uh, what happens. We're just going to play it out. We'll see what happens. Um, hmm. That's all fine in the news. Stuff. Email inbox. Contract has expired. We've been rejected by Toyota. Okay. Well, that was going to happen anyway because of the script of five seasons. Super Guri, let's okay. Can we apply? Does that does that delay our retirement? Can we can we can we continue as a as a backmarker old person thing like Pedro De La Rosa when he made his comeback for HRT? That is um, what a season, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. I, I apologize that it was broken up into two very distinct halves with um, F1 2018 coming out. I, there's no real avoiding that. I had to prioritize the new co game coming out. Unemployed. I'm gonna see that for the rest of my career now, so that's great. I think, I think it was uh, ten wins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, ten wins for the season. Couldn't, couldn't get one more. Those uh, final two races there just eluded me a little bit. Could have easily won those final two and possibly won even more, but pretty happy with the results I did get in the end there. I think that's everything. I think that is all we can do now. The only thing left to do is to end the career mode and what I assume is roll the credits. 18 wins, 16 poles, 267 points, one championship, five teams driven for. So I change teams every season 
Oh, or I had like seasons where I like tested for, for multiple teams. That was a thing. And uh, the average points per season is not great there. Got off to a bit of a slow start to the career, but that is it. Studio Liverpool. Making this fantastic game. A game that, for its time, probably paved the way in the Formula 1 scene. A lot of people first playing this game as their first F1 game and getting introduced to the sport. Really is a good game. If you haven't uh, tried it for yourself, I do recommend giving it a go. Um, as you've seen in my career mode playthrough, it is really, really brutal, really, really difficult. But once you can get past that learning curve... Um, the satisfaction and the reward that you get for um, getting the highest honours is um, something that's probably unmatched in other F1 games we have at the moment. We have even learning and tips. We can go through... Um, let's have a look at our trophy room because I think that's something you guys would like to see. You get trophies for every single race that you win at. And unfortunately for us, we weren't able to do a Lewis Hamilton. We haven't won at every single track on the calendar we just we weren't that good we still had our we, our weaknesses but um that's how it goes i don't know where this is situated i don't know if this is like london or new york or something but some kind of hustling and bustling city we unlock classic cars as we go through the career mode for doing different things achieving different results that's, oh, that Lotus looks fantastic. We've got uh, a helmet swap there with Alonso, Montoya, Button, and I think Kimi Raikkonen there. A few F1 wheels there. A Bridgestone tyre. What is this? Can we... What does Switch mean? Okay. Alright, so, let's have a look. 2006 US Grand Prix. We So, this will show you the trophies for like where we won. Only I don't think it shows if you get if you got a podium or it might do it might be in a different color We're on France. We unfortunately did not win Germany. We won Hungary a few times China trophy looks actually really cool. No win at Monza surprisingly We were very fast there, but never showed the potential what? Oh, I said that was China. I'm so sorry. That's Turkey. That is a nice trophy for Turkey. Here is China um, unsurprisingly, no trophy for Japan. Brazil, we have one at. We move over the page to Bahrain. That is a W there. A W for Malaysia. No win at the home Grand Prix, at the Australian Grand Prix. Um, San Marino was always a track that was difficult for me. I could not get past the auto spin curbs. Those were so, so brutal and caught me out every single time. Uh, Grand Prix of Europe, that would be Nürburgring, we got a win there. France, no win, uh, France? Spain, sorry. No win there. Monaco. Do I even need to say anything? Silverstone, no win there, unfortunately. Canada, we got a win there. And we got the Drivers' Trophy, but unfortunately, no Constructors. So that's the trophies. We still have more cars. The Honda RA272. We have the classic Lotus 49C. A Cooper Climax. Alfa Romeo. That looks really nice. And we are back at the table with our rubber ducky. That is the greatest trophy of them all. Keep that in my bathtub every night. Um, the Williams FW18. Someone told me in the recent, in one of my recent comments of my videos that you can unlock this by doing something. Maybe it's time trial, I'm not too sure. But if you guys could let me know, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. I think that might be the last car I have to unlock, if my memory serves me correctly. But if you're still watching, thank you guys so much for all the support on this series. It's a... 12 year old game now, we've been going for the best part of 70 episodes, 2 years, this has been a running series on my channel, maybe 3 years actually, so I appreciate you guys who have all um, stuck with me for the journey, we haven't unlocked this Williams either, 
But I think that might be it. Yes, it is. So, two cars to unlock. And I think that might be it in terms of content. I just want to make sure I have all the bases covered when it comes to the, uh, the career mode and just showing you guys everything that I've got. Unfortunately, I never really played around with the uh, customization. I always stuck with my Australia helmet as well, which looked a bit weird from the top-down view of the T-Cam. But we're just going to play through all the helmets really quickly, and then we're going to end this episode. What a journey. What an absolute journey. If there are any other F1 games that you guys want to see um, return to my channel, or you want to see a, a, a new game debut... Uh, on my channel for a career mode. Please let me know. That Portugal helmet looks pretty sick. I don't know what flag that's from. That's Turkey. It's definitely not China. Or is it China? Oh, no. I don't... I, the less said about that, the better, to be honest. And the Welsh flag to round out all of the helmets. Thank you guys so much for watching. F1 2006. It has certainly been a ride. Um, I don't know if I'm going to return to this game, in all honesty. I might do the odd challenge. Uh, if there's anything that's unfinished uh, on this game, please let me know. If you want to see any challenges um, on this game for one-off videos before I move, um, that is your last opportunity to see content from me, from this game, unless I buy the game again <laughs> and a PS3 again. We'll have to wait and see. There's multiplayer apparently, but I, I think the servers are closed down. I'm pretty sure that's a PC only thing. I'll have a look. It's loading, so something's happening. There is no F1 2006 online, unfortunately. So that is going to do it for us for today, guys. Once again, I think I've said this about 10 times now. Thank you guys so much for the support. This is the end of F1 2006, at least for the career mode series. Leave a like, subscribe. Peace.